Hello Stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I have another spooky cat card for you today with a watercolor background technique. I also do a little, a little more watercolor on this card. It's a super quick and easy card that I think is just really kind of classy. Can Halloween cards be classy? I think they can. Let's get started and I'll show you how I did this. So I'm going to bring in my cardstock layers and tell you a little bit about them. I've got a card base that is five and a half by eight and a half. This is pumpkin pie. I've got a piece of very vanilla that is four by five and a quarter for the inside. A piece of watercolor paper that is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. A basic black layer that is five by three and three quarters and a scrap of very vanilla. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna fold our card base in half and burnish that edge. And I am going to bring in the inside of my card and get that stamped first here. I am using our basic black archival ink I'm going to stamp the trick-or-treat first. There we go. I am using the Spooky Cat stamp set, by the way. It has a matching cat punch, which is really cool. I showed this to you guys last week. I have several cards on my blog using this bundle. So hop on over to my blog, stampabub.com. And you'll be able to find lots of great ideas using this bundle. And it's not just about Halloween. I have a whole set of cards on there that have nothing to do with Halloween using the cat punch. So make sure you check that out too. All right, I'm going to bring in a bunch of my little blocks here. And put these cute little potion elements on here. These are like magic potions. I don't think they'll turn anybody into a frog, but you never know. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp my little potion bottle, bottles I should say, right down here. And this is another two-step stamping process. And I say another because the card that I made last Friday was actually a three-step stamping process with the same stamp set. So I stamped my bottles with the archival black ink, and now I'm going to come in and fill them. And you're just going to kind of get your head over top of them so you can see down from straight above to add the filling or the potions. This is just a really great alternative. It's so much faster than coloring things in. And if you are a person who doesn't like to color, <gasps> gasp. I know you're out there. This is a great alternative. The next thing I want to do is use these like scribbly lines. I think they're very, very interesting. And I brought those in from one side, just like this, and the other side. Isn't that cute? Okay. I'll show you something different on the front with the same line stamp, and you're going to love it, I think. So here's the inside of our card. We're going to get that mounted right away. Here we go. Okay, we have that part done. Now I'm going to bring in my watercolor. And this is just a really fun technique. You take your ink pad and you open it up a little bit. I've shown you this before, but in case you're new or you missed it or you can't remember, like I wouldn't be able to remember because I have no memory left, um, and you squeeze on it. When you squeeze on it, that's going to add some ink to your lid. And I'm going to grab one of the big aqua painters. When you order aqua painters, you get two in a package. One has a much smaller, finer tip, and one has a big tip like this. This is the perfect technique for the big tip. And I'm going to squeeze this. It's already got water in it. I'm going to squeeze it to get this nice and juicy. You don't want to use real full strength. 
ink. And here's something I forgot to do already. Hang tight. I do have a bunch of aqua painters. First thing you want to do is you want to wet your card stock. And this is watercolor paper and I'm going to squeeze some water in here. And you want to wet this because when we're doing a technique like this, watercolor paper needs to be moistened because it works better that way. It loves water. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring this in. And do you see how that color just spreads? That's because we already put color, or water on our watercolor paper. And it will spread like that. This is what it's supposed to do. It's such a cool look. We're going to set that aside and let it dry. Or you can hit it with a heat tool. I'm just going to clean off my aqua painter here. And you just keep wiping it on your scrap paper until there's no more color in it. Then it's ready to use a new color. And if you don't have the patience to let this dry, you can hit it with the heat tool. I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Now if you find that your paper is buckling like this, go to the back and it'll lay back down. There's a great tip. I know I hate it when my paper buckles. And that kind of flattens it right out. All right. Now, see it's still a little warped? I'm just going to do a little bit of this. Now we're looking pretty great, right? Okay, exciting stuff. Now, you need this to be dry before you can continue on to the next step. I'm going to bring back in my archival black ink, and I am going to stamp my spooky cat right about here. You need to give it a lot of pressure because watercolor paper is very porous. So you want to make sure your pad is inked up well and you give it a lot of pressure. Then I'm going to come in with my pumpkin pie again and this, these little line images and I'm going to stamp that right here. I'm going to come back in with my aqua painter and I'm going to make this bleed a little bit. I did not add any color to my aqua painter. I am just making the ink that I put on here bleed so that it goes along with my watercolor up here. Isn't that a cool look? I love this. Kind of happened on it by accident. It's like, oh, what happens if we add a little water to that? Boom. I'm going to hit that with a heat gun again. Or you could set it aside to let it dry. But when you're going to stamp over it again, you want to make sure that it's completely dry. Now I'm going to bring in my Happy Halloween. I'm going to stamp that right in this image. Isn't that cute? Okay, we are almost done here. This is just a super easy project. I'm coming in with my witch's hat and I'm going to stamp that on my scrap of very vanilla and then uh, there's also a buckle to fill in the col and color your buckle to fill it in. Another little two-step stamping process and I'm just going to cut this out and unlike last week on my video I'm cutting the spider web right off and you can do that with some of these more intricate elements when you have a big bold stamp like this because I don't want to cut around some of these items like that little spider that was on the top. I don't think that would look very good cut out. I've seen it on a few cards and I'm sorry if you have made a card with it cut out but I don't think it looks that great. There we go. Nice image to cut out because it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of little crevices and stuff that you have to cut around in, right? Okay, dimensionals. Let's pop this puppy up on a dimensional. I'm going to put a big one there. And have you seen these little mini dimensionals? They are stinking adorable. I'm going to put one more right up there because it fits perfect and I can. I just cleaned my stamp studio the other day, so I'm being careful not to throw everything on the floor. <laughs> yeah, 
So this is Kelly being neat, which doesn't happen too often. Now, since my um, watercolor paper, I'm gonna bend it a little bit to make it lay down. You can do that. And I'm going to use Fast Fuse to attach this to my card, my black layer here. Oops, let's get this rolling. There we go. And when you use Fast Fuse, you give it a little, like you're, you're making a check mark like that so that it breaks the adhesive. And notice I'm putting this all the way around the outside edge because that's really gonna hold my card layer down flat. And unlike glue, you do not get a second chance with this. So make sure you've got it on there where you want it to stay. And then I've got this cute black and white baker's twine. And this just really, I think, makes my card pop and come together. When I was designing this, I'm like, oh, this needs just one more little element. I thought, oh, baker's twine. You guys know that's my go-to. And I just wrap this around here three times. And cut it and tie it in a knot first and then a bow. Look how crooked I got that. You're going, Kelly, your baker's twine is crooked. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate the help. When I teach stamping classes, my ladies know me so well. They really do watch me. And um, they'll say, oh, you forgot to do that. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. I wish you guys could just like peek right in the camera and go, Kelly, don't forget to do this because I need all the help I can get. And apparently I need a lot of help tying a knot. You'd think I could tie a knot by now. Here we go, cute little bow. And see this kink? I don't like those. I know, I'm a little weird, but I like to curl my ribbon up a little bit because it gives it that little bit of fun, right? That's just fun. Last but not least, I am mounting this entire layer on dimensionals. Why? Because I can. <laughs> I like saying that, but because it adds that dimension to it that makes it really cool. And you get a gazillion dimensions in a pack, dimensionals I should say, in a pack, so don't be afraid to use those. They really do add a lot to your card. You guys saw I poked my fingernail in the middle of all those dimensionals. That really helps to pick up those edges of the backing. Let's get this out of here. There you go. What do you think? Is that a fun trick-or-treat card? I love it. I've got a vanilla envelope here and I've stamped the spooky cat on there. Don't forget to decorate up your envelopes. Everybody I send cards to just loves when they get their mail. It's like, oh, look at the envelope. That's just the start to what's inside, right? There you go. I hope you had fun. I hope you use this. You can really use this background for just about any type of image like this. Stamp right over top of it, add a little element, a little baker's twine or some ribbon, and you've got a really fabulous card. And remember, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business please pop me an email at kelly at a stamp above.com and I would be happy to send you our newest catalog. The holiday mini catalog just came out September 1st. We've got Halloween and fall, Thanksgiving, Christmas, even Valentine's in there. There are some beautiful new products, lots of sweets and lots of bundles that save you money when you buy them together. And of course, a ton of card ideas, home decor ideas, decorating ideas, scrapbooking ideas, all in that catalog. I am happy to send that to you for free if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you do have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you don't have the holiday mini catalog yet, get in touch with them. Have them send one to you. And if they don't send one to you, you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Then you pop me an email and I would be happy to become your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. How about that? Thanks so much, you guys. Have a great weekend. Add a little sparkle to someone's day and send them a card. Bye-bye.